there was a picture of one of the uh, two founders of Google sat on the new your subway with a pair of these glasses on, and they were actually giving it, uh, giving it a, a trial run. Uh, so you know, it's coming. The big, big problem they have, believe it or not, is battery life. <laughs> So yeah, this is um, Gartner's hype cycle, which is a sort of common, uh, commonly uh, accepted graph which shows how technologies are, um, are introduced, and they're in ARs around about here at the moment, so the, the big wow thing is gone. Um, and there are slowly some products being brought out. Have you heard of Wikitude? Wikitude? Wikitude is, a, um, is an, an AR system, basically used for find restaurants and bars, hold your phone up and it'll come up with distances, how far they are away. Pearson have done a little project where they've um, <clears throat> attached tourist uh, phrase books to Wikitude. They call it Lang R, uh, Lang A R they call it. Uh, so you, you know you put it at a bar, then it comes up with the Spanish for how to for a drink and so on. So there is work being done where companies are piggybacking on already existing AR technology, but what we did was started from scratch uh, with the help of, of Matt, who can't be here today, and uh, built it from scratch. Okay, so now we're going to just have a quick look at our research project. Uh, as Billy said, he's, uh, the, uh, he's working with me, and I teach Italian on a program which is similar to a university language program. So we've got a big variety of students coming from different backgrounds, not just linguists, but study engineering or fashion or whatever. So we have a general audience and we decided that um, we were going to try on this uh, group of students. Actually our intent and intention was to test at the beginning of term one because we just moved into semester at the new college university and we were hoping to have it ready by then but obviously with various problems again with our learner technologies and the technology itself, we had to move it forward. So this is why today we're just presenting you not the final problem, but what we're doing and we're still searching. So what we decided was uh, working closely with Matt to do something more specific to Coventry and for our students. And we designed a bespoke uh, treasure hunt around the city of Coventry. So it's always to link it back with what um, Billy said before. We're trying to take some of the learning outside the classroom and to make our students more motivated, hopefully. And with our previous project, it worked quite well, and we received a, a, a good feedback also, because 78% of our students, they all owned a, a digital device or some sort. So we thought we could actually uh, carry on with our uh, research. And what we did, we uh, prepared some recorded audio files with instructions, in Italian, obviously, because I'm the major culprit, and I, uh, we scripted all, we had all the scripts before and then we started doing the audio recording and the sound files in a very simple way to start with and we'll see what is going to end up. Yeah, we, yeah, we um, at the time, well, all the way along we'd been thinking to ourselves what we really need is an app to build the app because it was quite a cumbersome process where we were standing there taking photographs of a mobile phone to get the precise GPS coordinates of another uh, phone. Um, so we thought it's another project for the future. If you're going to, because of the uh, laborious nature of, of, of the time we spent on it, um, that we need an app to help us to build it. So an app to build an app. And again, what we did, uh, we what we decided in, for our project is uh, is important for our students to practice all the four skills. And, uh, and thinking about receptive and productive skills. So what we decided to do is, uh, obviously, with the, uh, this project, they will use listening, speaking, reading, and writing, because some of the messages, obviously, are audio files, so they will be recorded, and they will have to listen to the messages. They will have to read something whenever they're going around following our treasure hunt. And at the same time, there's also something that will trigger their speaking. They will have to record something that will come back to me. And uh, um, so we're trying to do a bit of everything at the same time. 
hopefully it should work and we will see the results once it will be the prototype will be ready. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So now at the moment we haven't decided, well, yes. we're, we're going to do the, the pilot and, and see whether the students prefer the audio instructions or, or, or reading or a combination of the two. Yes, and so the integrating skills all together, yeah. Yeah. that's right. Yeah. And then again, from augmented reality, the threshold of the experience is important for us because the students will move from location to location based on our instructions. They will have to answer our question. They will have to follow different routes. They will have to point their phone. And there are certain prompts that they will receive in order that they can uh, capture some pictures. They will follow some guidelines and hopefully they will reach the final destination before coming back to class and report to us. And um, obviously, this is what the requiring of the GPS that you, would, you, might, you can. Yeah, and you can specify um, how how big the area is surrounding them before a particular <coughs> prompt is is uh, activated. Um, again, we've, we've got to play around with that a little bit at the moment. I'm not sure how we're going to do two or three meters. Yes, yeah, so around um, college and near the cathedral. And now there's uh, something that we can which we show you, which are mock-ups of the app. And I think, as I know there are some people in the audience, they are Italian, or they speak Italian, but we can listen to something. This is one of the, one of the part of the project. Obviously, we didn't implement anything also because it's not ready yet. But these are some of the uh, questions that we will ask. So uh, this is what Billy was saying. We don't know if you just have to follow the audio, or they will also have to read, or a combination of both. Now, you, uh, play with, you will, yes, we will play some. Portate quanti gradini avete fatto in tutto. Okay, this is the <laughs> like question. Alla vostra insegnante. So, practically, the first question will be, uh, uh, because uh, we're talking about Coventry, and uh, our entrance to the university is opposite the cathedral, so we decided to start our treasure hunt at the beginning of the cathedral. And the first question is to, uh, obviously in Italian, they would have done this vocabulary. I forgot to tell you at the beginning that this is addressed to post-beginner students. So it's a second level of uh, um, Italian. They haven't done a lot of study before because our university language program is only for 10 weeks long, two hours. So they would have done 20 weeks of, um, sorry, 20 hours of study on Italian beforehand. And then they will come back to us in a second year. So it's not a great deal, but we try to cover quite a good ground. And then before going into and sending them outside, we would have covered all these part of directions, so the use of imperatives. And it also embeds some of the revision from previous lessons. So the first one was the question asking, you are in front of the cathedral now. Uh, can you go up the steps and count how many steps you're doing? Because there's a first set of steps, and then they have to turn to the left, I think, and then there's more steps to take. And the uh, following question we'll ask, okay, now you counted the first one, count how many you've done now, and then you have to add how many steps you've done all together. So at the same time, it's not just understanding the question, but it's also practicing revising numbers, and uh, uh, also maybe a little bit of mathematical skills as well. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Ora, trovandovi davanti al centro informazioni, Uscite dalla rovina della cattedrale attraverso il cancello di metallo che si trova alla vostra destra e andate verso il bar ristorante di Estaggio. Ok, so uh, if you need me to translate it, is that they, this is the position of the cathedral and the ruins and they will have to go up the steps, go all the way around the ruins and then they will uh, end up in front of the tourist information office that is there and they have to come out from one particular exit, which is the metal gate uh, on, the, on the side, on the right hand side, and um, they will face a restaurant. Now, this has been a dilemma because we designed this and then we thought, how much longer will this restaurant last in Coventry? <laughs> and so we thought, because we realized the third time one that's changed since then, so maybe we might have, you know, when we do the prototype, we might have to change a little bit more as a general thing because the establishment might disappear in the next year or so, or in the next six months. Like that. Terrible, but yes, exactly. Well, we never know. But uh, so something that we still need to to sort of tweak, tweak uh, some of the little uh, information that we've got. Okay. So. Okay. So talk about a little bit about the literature on AR and language learning, and there isn't much of it. Is the, the it's very new technology, uh, but it does. 
uh, meant from lots of other subject areas. So, Brandon uh, Canole, who's talking later on, I believe, yes. talks about digital literacies, it helps students develop that. Um, mobile assisted language learning, Pulska Booms, he's written extensively about it, um, and also uh, you know, the, the importance of, of uh, language learning being defined by time and, and place. Godwin Jones writes in the States, he's very good on, on the technology side of, of mobile language learning. Um, I read a lot, a lot of his papers, he's, he's very good. Uh, Traxler, based at Wolverhampton, talked about conceptualization and evaluation. Stockwell, again in the States, did a big uh, project on SMS, text messaging, um, with the conclusion, I think, uh, by the time he published his results, the technology had caught up, and a lot of the points he made had been overcome, the technological obstacles had been overcome uh, by smartphones, essentially, captured. Mm -hmm. And Stella Heard, who I'll read to sort of challenge a little bit with what Michael was saying before, uh, she writes a lot about learner autonomy. Um, she says, well, a major advantage is seen would be the reduction of social isolation for geographically dispersed and or shy learners. Others dislike what they see, the lack of the human dimension. I think we need to bear that in mind that not all students will be into the idea of, of walking around college with their phones during the town. But our, our pilot will give us some more concrete data about that. Okay, so scalability. Um, it's obviously, I was thinking we, we wouldn't really be able to show you the demo because it's very much well, dependent upon your location, so uh, you have to be in commentary, so maybe we'll have to do this commentary at some point. Um, of course, what we did think was there's no reason why we couldn't change the audio files over. We run a big pre-sessional course and my colleagues said, ooh, so you know, once we've established it, we can look at doing an English version as a sort of introduction to the, to the town centre. And you usually also apply, you can, you can apply to other languages, yeah. like French or Spanish or German, or whatever would be interesting. Yeah. And, you know, that was a relatively, relatively uh, quick part of the project, we're sitting down, we scripted what we needed to, to, uh, to say, and then since yeah. you're we recording, we did it in a, probably less than an hour, didn't we? Well, in the recording, yes, yeah. but... Uh, the itinerary took yeah. longer also because we had to go with the GPS and the, right. the, the, the So as I've already mentioned, this point about building an app, to build an app, mm -hmm. um, our learning technologist, I didn't remind him he mentioned this six months ago, he said, ah, yes. you need to do that. <laughs> so hopefully he'll come up with something that we could use to build it and build something similar in the future. Um, I think it's also important to say, I still get frustrated with the speeds on mine. Coming down on the train, the signal comes and goes. We've got 4G in Birmingham, I've got a 4G phone, but they say, well, they always say it's 10 times faster, don't they, every time it's upgraded. Um, so speeds are going to go on improving. And battery, I've actually fell over on the ice this morning, go back home to get my battery charger for my phone, and thinking, ah, it's going to run out. And we've got thick ice on the floor in Birmingham, so hopefully that won't happen again once you know, the next generation of smartphones will hopefully have better uh, battery life. Okay, then. Um, <clears throat> we've always already said positive aspects, digital literacy, and this idea about taking the learning outside the classroom. I'll read another quote from uh, Brown, who, who says that, um, talk about a workshop. The workshop examined ways of connecting learning across formal and non formal settings, such as carrying out work outdoors and later reflecting upon it in the classroom. We also talked about the opportunities for lifelong learning and the fact that mobile learning creates many opportunities for informal learning, such as that in the workplace or for learners who are on the move, on public transport, for example. In this way, mobile and location-based learning provides settings in which new paradigms of edu education can be explored. This could possibly mean the separation of schooling, which seems to be assessment-driven, and education as a more holistic endeavor. That's quite interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> This is exactly, again, what we were saying before, taking the learning outside the classroom and not just being based and linked just to assessment or whatever. And this is uh, some of the negative aspects, uh, as we said before, is quite time consuming. It took us a long time not to record, but to try to get around all the technology and uh, it's a very, very long yeah. process. And it's quite a learning it's a curve for us as well because we are sort of trying it. But, we're always positive, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to, the, our prototype will be working really well. 
And also, this is yeah. inspired to what Michael was saying about bring your own device, yeah. because we relied a lot on this. And also our students think that this is very, very important. And if we go on to the next one, we were talking about this is a thing. Okay, this is for the augmented reality. But the fact that we, we, our students are always coming to us with new ideas. So we are trying to be innovative in our teaching, but it also comes back to what our students want. And their enthusiasm is quite strong, so we always get motivated as well and sort of like wrapped by <laughs> their willingness. Yeah, and then just to mention some of the other things you can do <coughs> with uh, augmented reality outside of language learning. Um, these uh, role plays, these uh, geocaching, so virtual uh, items that they can uh, locate, and it's been used for projects and for field trips, virtual projects and, and field trips. And also, the one about the theatre, and we done yeah. it. Somebody else also developed uh, something about Stratford going around uh, yes. and finding more about Stratford uh, and able so it's related to some in the language as well. Yeah, just to finish off with this. With this uh, uh, quotes, uh, which perhaps is a little bit of evangelistic kind of reflection, <laughs> but just means that the teachers need to be learners in order to make sense and take account of new technologies in their practice. I think you know our, our previous survey, they were very clear about um, having to rely on the the grading systems on the uh, app websites on on Apple and Android for their choice of of. Uh, Based on language, ratings, rather than be able to go to the tutor and say, well, what, what do you recommend? What do you recommend for, diction, for a dictionary? What would you recommend for vocabulary learning? Um, so I think you know we have a responsibility as tutors to be engaged with technology, and so we can offer that kind of advice. Okay. Any, any questions? Yeah. I um I think it's brilliant. It's a great idea. Obviously, there's the issue of how long you spend on it for yeah. an activity that the students will complete in 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, so my question was, any chance of you turning that into an open software so the rest of us can just upload our photos and our recordings? Yeah. I mean, um, certainly wouldn't be against that, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I think the scalability, I hadn't thought of that, but because I, I get a bit bogged down in the, yeah, based on location, so some of the activities, perhaps we need to go back to the drawing board and think about it. Yeah, if we've got pointing your phone and taking a picture of a particular statue or something and sending it back to us. I mean, we have, I didn't mention any of the technological difficulties we have. Uh, we are using Adobe Air is the, is the platform. We, we started off with that and it didn't work on Android. Right. Uh, so we moved on to a, 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 a different coding uh, platform. Uh, that didn't work, so we went back, and by the time we got back to it, it was updated and worked, so that was, that was the one we adopted. And another thing, if I may, yeah. um, surely the obvious thing to me is you go to the Coventry Tourist Board, and say, yeah. we'll yeah. give yeah. this to your tourists, yeah. you, give us, money. Yes. Yes. you yes. give us money and we make yeah. more. No, that's, yes. that's a good idea. And make an investment, you know, yeah. make, because you're obviously, your time, your techies, yes. your whatever. Yeah. And that could be in English, of course. Yes. You know, it could be in any language. In any language, yeah. because yeah. we've got a lot of tourists coming to Thank you. <laughs> 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 I'll, give I'll take a cut. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a comment. I, uh, have you thought of, rather than yourself doing the whole, all the work, asking students to do it? Mm -hmm. So it's a collaborative or, you know, something, a task. That mm -hmm. Imagine you're a tourist guide and you have to show someone something that they can construct for you. Yeah. Well, I think, again, if we could construct the app to build the app, mm -hmm. then that's something yes. that we could, we could definitely look at. I think because it's a very new technology, we, uh, the problems with building it, once we've overcome them,
discussions uh, evolved around those materials, and they were very practical. Uh, we had, per year, we used to run them uh, for a couple of five fixed slots in the summer, five weeks, and we would have 200 students on them. That was 2005. 2011, we decided to roll this model out further and offer a, um, a pre-arrival course to all our international students coming from the University of Southampton. Now we get about 4,000 new students every year coming in October. So what we did was we spam that. We, we threw away the idea of a fixed course, fixed mm -hmm. slot, mm -hmm. because that was a major problem for students because they're busy sorting out visas and just that and the other. Mm -hmm. And we opened it from April, about the time they were applying, getting their offers, through to October. And we also took out the tutoring because we've had problems with the tutoring element because students were simply asking the same questions over and over again. Major problem in the middle of the summer, there are very few spare, uh, spare tutors to yeah. tutor an online course. Yeah. Everyone's involved in face-to-face -face teaching. So we took out the tutoring. So we put the materials in there. We decided to throw out the discussion forums we didn't have a tutor. We created, a, we used something called a social war. I'm talking about it tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at uh, two thirty. The whole thing. So we used a social war, and students, the student, what we did was we spam emailed them through every couple of weeks. Any students went into the university system, found the students who applied, spam emailed them free course, uh, find out what it's going to be like studying at the University of Southampton, mm -hmm. um, and we gave them a generic login. We put the course out through Moodle. We created a plugin so that when the students use the same generic login, uh, they got a little set up an account set of questions. Uh, this allowed us, once they had their personal login, to track what they were doing. Um, 2011, we ran it for the first time. We had um, 1,600 students did that. They created an account, they responded to the invitation, created an account did the course to varying amounts because as, we, as you've talked yeah. about well, it, individuals get different things out of courses mm -hmm. um, this summer last summer sorry we ran it we had over 2,000 students do it so we're getting better at it mm -hmm. in those ways but the social war what happened was the students used the social war you probably none of you will turn up Presentation. <laughs> 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 the students use the social wall to exchange their email accounts, their QQ if they were Chinese, yeah. Facebook if yeah. they were UK or America based. They exchanged their, and this was the hunch we had, they exchanged their uh, contact details mm -hmm. and they got in contact with each other outside the course. Uh, and the social rule was good for this. Yeah. Um, ironically, then they started actually trying to use the social wall to discuss a bit. This was all without a tutor, but then no tutor. Um, so they started trying to discuss. At that point, we had to add a discussion forum, a one of the male academic, rather dry discussion forum, to allow the students to talk. And I don't know if any of you have visited the student room, which is a kind of web-based open thing. It began, I've been sort of looking at how it developed over the summer, and it pretty much models how the student group is. So the threads that students create are students from Uganda looking for other students from East Africa, or students wanting to share a house while yeah. living in halls, looking for other students to share a house. So very practical things. And they created their own threads, and they went off and they discussed on their own. So completely without tutor. So that was our experience of a, an online course that involved a lot of students, but the satisfaction levels were quite high. We gave them a feedback form. We had about 8% of the um, 2,000 actually sent us feedback. And um, it was very good. I mean, they, they felt they got a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you can imagine the students in that situation. So a lot about confidence building, uh, making contacts, no, shared um, interests, exactly. Exactly. shared interests. Yeah. So from their from their standpoint, they got a lot of that <coughs> course, and from our point of view, it was a successful course. But it didn't involve much tutoring. I can't really say hand on heart. There was a lot of sort of co-constructive knowledge in there, but there was a lot of exchange of information. Um, so for me, that was a kind of duke. 
<laughs> different on the bike. <laughs> of course, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, and I'm looking for ways to actually, maybe next year, add <coughs> tutoring with, we added, we added links to Facebook accounts and so on, to actually add something that's a little bit teacher-led and maybe does um, develop some particular threads that students want to talk about in depth. Um, with a tutor, but I'm still figuring out how to do that. But that, that was our experience anyway. But one of the challenges when we do things like this in the open is tracking what's happening. Because people exchange their email addresses, their Facebook accounts and whatever, and then the discussion moves elsewhere, and then you don't know it's happening. So how do you show that it's been a success, that the students have been in contact, that have been talking to each other, you've lost that information because it's just happening elsewhere. It's just mm -hmm. an acknowledgement that it is happening, you know. Yeah. But, uh, well, you can get it from the feedback form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, but then, you know, if you've got eight percent of people who return the feedback form, I'm sure there's yes. a hell of a lot of issues. Yes. All the stuff happening to get yes. the yes. people on Skype, they've talked by email, and we don't get. Uh, that's a big challenge, it's really, a challenge. for most is, is yeah. in particular for institutions. Because yeah, exactly. Because you will have to then justify to the institution to why they can continue doing this course because it's been successful and they'll say, well, where's the, where's where's the, the discussions, where's the, you know. Yeah. Okay, so we just move on to our, we, no, we probably move on to lunch, so. <laughs> yeah, I suppose my, um, one of my key interests in this is actually related to the open access to research uh, debate, and um, one of the things that's increasingly concerned me over the last couple of years is um, how restricted our academic research uh, is to the outside world. How in most things that we publish are behind paywalls, um, if you want to buy some of my work, if you remember the public, you, you know, you have to pay $25 for a 15-page article. Um, please don't, and uh, email me if you want to read anything I've written. Um, you know, this, this um, is uh, highly concerning me. Um, the, the way the debate has sort of evolved in recent um, last few months has actually concerned me even more with the, um, a lot of it, you know, this preference for gold open access publisher pays. I don't think it's any good if people can't participate in the publishing of research. So it's no good just having people being able to read what other people have gone done if they can't afford our access to participate. And this um, links very much with the um, MOOC situation, is that you've got um, what um, access to research do these uh, students have? Um, our regular students, so as a member of staff or a student, uh, um, a university, you'll get a library card, you'll have access to all the online journals and resources, the library. And um, I think one of the connections I want to make is, is that what are the students on these MOOCs actually getting? Are they able to, tra are they able to access translation journals? Are they able to have access to the OU library, uh, for, for example? Um, <laughs> you know, so in that sense, although these are seen as democratic and participatory, um, that those um, students do not have the same access to uh, knowledge that um, regular students are uh, face to face and otherwise registered students do. So I think that's an important link that's perhaps not being made true. as much as I would like. It's, it's, one, it's one of the criticisms that has been made of this massive uh, books. You know, the, is it like second best? Is it just for the unwashed masses? Somebody wrote the other day. You know, is this just good enough for the unwashed masses who can't make it Berkeley and Stanford and Harvard? And of course, the risk with the X groups, where it's you get one idea shot to you, yeah. rather yeah, than yeah. connected ones, yes. where it's like yeah. you can all put something in. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Also what they're doing. So there's lots of tensions there. Oh, right, Vicky has a question. Oh, well, what I was just going to come back to is back to your definition of a MOOC. If, if it's about content, then what John was saying is absolutely right, access to research and knowledge and so on. But if the definition is about sharing and collective knowledge and individual gain, then the rest doesn't matter. It, it's actually enhanced learning rather than access to knowledge. So it, it comes back, I mean, you're absolutely right. Of course, but if it's about what you can do together, then perhaps it doesn't matter quite as much. Mm. Mm. 
Thank you. Thank you.